Hello, Theo Traders. This is Gianni DePoche, and today is the 19th of March, 2024. And we've been seeing stocks consolidate near at their all-time highs over the last couple of sessions. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen the NASDAQ uh, June contract and the S&P June contract make new all-time highs. And the reason I bring that up is because it's pretty important with respect to uh, some cyclical factors that we are considering right now. But I think the bigger opportunities are presenting themselves in the inflation space right now. What does that mean? Sectors like basic materials, energy, industrials, consumer staples seem to have more favorable risk reward opportunities on the long side of the market right now compared to growth. That doesn't mean there aren't opportunities in growth, but more along the swing trade line. So I'm going to share a couple of charts with you that I'm looking at right now that I think will highlight some of the big opportunities as well as some of the risks mounting in this market. So starting off with the S&P, you know, we have Fed Chair Powell uh, set to uh, speak tomorrow following the FOMC rate decision. Uh, they're not going to raise rates. And the way it seems now is that rate cut odds keep getting pushed back and the quantity of rate cuts seem to be decreasing. So that's probably a good thing, but it also means that uh, inflationary pressures are likely to come back. So the S&P is coiling near its all-time highs. I would really like to see us perhaps give back some of these recent gains tomorrow and maybe into Thursday uh, and take out last week's low. Uh, I think that would be a really good uh, way to kind of shake out some of the excessive bulls uh, in this market. The NASDAQ's been coming down a little bit too. I still like tech. Uh, I still like growth. I just think there might be some outperformance in the inflation-related uh, segments of the market right now. I'm also watching the Russell 2000 here because I think we may have just completed a low of significance. So be on the lookout for small cap stocks and some uh, opportunities brewing in that space. Uh, you know, keep in mind that super microcomputer, which by the way, uh, is down today about 10%, uh, did move on from the Russell uh, 2000 into the S&P 500. So, uh, you know, it being down 10% is not a headwind for the Russell 2000 today. But um, I do want to take a look at crude oil because we did seemingly break out from this rounding bottom and or saucer formation. This is a pretty significant move and puts us on track for a rally into the $88, $90 area. Now, it could go even higher than that, but that is my primary uh, price objective. Did pick up some positions in PBF Energy recently, uh, as well as... Um, Viper Energy, and those are acting pretty well. Uh, but everywhere you look across the board in the energy sector, if you look at the uh, exploration and production ETF, that is also performing well, outperforming XLE. So that's something to keep an eye on if you're looking at opportunities. Uh, also eyeing a long position here in Matador Resources. Uh, so across the commodity co complex, especially in the energy space, we're seeing nice setups. Um, even copper, you know, copper, had a nice breakout last week. It's giving back some of that today. But if you look at some of the moves that we've seen in copper mining uh, companies and just basic materials for that matter, they look pretty good. FCX, SCCO, you know, these are nice moves to the upside. Granted, a little overbought near term, but I think they will eventually continue higher. But that is a major tailwind for the inflation trade and probably means that interest rates are not going to be coming down uh, this summer, at least in the long end of the curve. If the Fed cuts in the short end of the curve, it's probably because the market's pulling back substantially. And we do know that you usually see inflation related segments of the market outperform in the later stages of the equity market cycle compared to the beginning. OK, so um, one tech stock that we have in the book that is still uh, doing pretty well is App Levin, close to our secondary upside objective. Uh, but I really am starting to be a little more concerned with the state of the consumer, especially when you look at the consumer discretionary uh, ETF that still has not taken out its all-time high from 2021. And you compare that to XLP, which is you know trying to break out of this descending channel, massive price base, one's on the verge of a breakout, one's on the verge of confirming a significant secondary lower high with respect to the trend. And whenever you see consumer staples outperforming consumer discretionary, that's not a risk on signal. That suggests that markets are discounting perhaps a return of inflation because what will happen in that environment? Well, consumers, they'll still continue to spend out of necessity, but eating out, vacations, those are the first things in the budget that get trimmed, but they're still going to keep buying food. They're still going to keep buying toiletries, and that's in the consumer staples 
uh, space. So uh, I do want to take a look at the bond market real quick. You'll see here uh, that bonds are getting a little bit of a relief rally, but I think we're on the precipice of another big breakdown in the treasury market. And that's also going to steepen the yield curve. Keep in mind that if we see long-term rates rise with short-term rates fixed, um, that's going to steepen the yield curve and probably pushes back the recession. That being said, I still am looking at one potentially uh, starting toward the end of this year. But, um, you know, I, I think that the way the macroeconomic landscape is evolving right now, it is favoring precious metals, perhaps even more than crypto over the next uh, month or so. So I want to be very clear at that, that um, I think we could see precious metals outperform crypto over the next month. But after that, I think crypto will be uh, a more favorable trade to consider. So both gold and silver, I think, are trying to find lows. Uh, this week, we'll see if Powell is generous to that asset class. But uh, to jump over to the crypto space here, finally seeing some selling pressure in Bitcoin. I would really like to see Bitcoin drop to fifty to $52,000 per coin. If it does, I think it would present an excellent risk, buy, uh, risk reward opportunity, a dip buying opportunity. Ethereum kind of accelerating uh, to the downside here. Uh, but that is also, I'm looking uh, at a potential low in the $2,800 to $3,000 area. And, you know, we know that a lot of these crypto names can run uh, significantly micro strategy uh, getting sold off pretty hard right now. But, you know, I do want to pivot back over to the tech space real quick. We uh, issued a buy alert on Apple uh, on the 7th of March, and that was actually the exact low. And we're seeing some nice follow through here. So, you know, even if you have stocks like NVIDIA, which, by the way, is still consolidating near its highs, it's not breaking down. I think you could see some leadership shift uh, leadership shift from stocks like NVIDIA over to a stock like Apple. Because here's the thing. If Apple breaks this 166 zone, it's probably going to 130 and you're not going to want to own it. So I think it's a really good risk reward opportunity. If you zoom out here on Apple, you have this huge cup and handle. I'd like to see Apple perhaps rally to 250, 260. I'm also pretty bullish on Google. Uh, we issued a buy alert on the 7th as well on Google, and that turned out to be uh, a great entry point as we've confirmed another higher low with respect to the trend uh, and are close to retesting uh, its former multi-year highs. So again, I think that uh, some sideways price action in the equity market would be constructive, but we are running out the time uh, here. And that could open the door to another really strong rally over the next couple of months. If we can get through these next uh, week, this next week or two without a major breakdown in the indices, it bodes very well. That being said, uh, we have to beware of a return of inflationary pressures that I think could uh, increase the probability of market volatility later this year. So we made it through the first round of the storm, I think, for the most part. Uh, let's get through the second and see if uh, stocks can make new all-time highs in the next a uh, couple of weeks. So that's all I had to review with you today, everyone. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the Theo Trade chat room.